making your own music, um, writing songs. It's, it's like gratifying. It feels like I am putting something on this earth that is unique, that will last, I guess, like a legacy a little bit. Why do we make any art? We make it because we want to feel something or because it makes us feel something, I guess. For me, as I've said before, it's an emotional release a lot of times and helps me process uh, that side of myself so that I don't just explode into a million pieces. And that's something like you're proud of for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. I, 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 it's just, you know, you go back and listen to mm -hmm. old stuff and, you know. It's really nice to hear it when it still holds up. <laughs> I mean, it's like publishing a book or or yeah. having a kid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where I know, you, yeah. you know, you have created something that other that's tangible, that other people can experience, that connects you with other people, that potentially helps them. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Good Vibes Show. Um, I'm here with uh, Merlo Embargo. We've got Jeff and Scarlett all the way from the U.S., going to be chatting about music, songwriting, um, what inspires us to make music, and hopefully you're going to get something inspirational out of this podcast episode. If you're new to the show and you haven't subscribed yet and you're on YouTube, make sure you click that subscribe button and the notification bell, and that way you'll never miss an episode from us. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, welcome. Um, the best way you can support the show is to rate us on Spotify or on Apple and just give us the five stars. Just go for the full five <laughs> and um, everyone will be happy. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Jeff and Scarlett. So great to have you all the way from the US. I'm glad our schedules could align and we can meet in person kind of thing. <laughs> Thanks for having us on. I, th I think it's uh, 10 a.m., right, where you are? Yeah. In, in, uh, in Perth, right? Oh, yeah. wow. Not, not bad. Yeah. It's probably 10, 10 p.m., 8 p.m. for you? 7. 7 p.m. here. Oh, nice. But, yep. Yeah, too bad. Yeah. Whereabouts in the US are you? Are you in? Uh, California yeah. so west coast we're in um near Los Angeles so about 20 minutes from Los and the city of Los Angeles I guess yeah. or yeah awesome we just say LA we yeah. just say LA to anyone outside of California we're close enough I guess yeah it sounds very um similar to me anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> right LA and California I'm sure they're like oh yeah line, but they're probably not <laughs> Yeah, well, there, there is a uh, San Francisco and uh, other places too, but yeah. Well, no, it's a it's a big state. It really is. It's like so. when Perth people think, "Oh, you're in, like they're like I'm coming to Australia and they're going to Sydney and not Perth," and they're like, "Yeah, yeah. next door." Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's actually yeah. six exactly. hours plane right away. Yes, now, that per is exactly. Perth right. is uh, it kind of in the middle on the southern coast. Is that right, or am I totally wrong? Um, not in the middle, like on right on the very west side, like right very on west the side. edge. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh okay. wow. All, all oh, the cities of Australia are around the edge because there's yeah. nothing in the middle. <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah. but certain death. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's poisonous, uh, poisonous bugs and stuff, I guess. So. Yeah, something like that. Oh, awesome. So, look, I've, I've been really enjoying listening to your music and discovering some of your songs. Um, it's great to hear... Um, like the variety. I think you've got a lot of songs on a lot of albums that I've heard saying you've put on Spotify. And there's a big difference in those albums I I, I noticed, like the, the style of the music or I don't know, the, the the meaning of the music even, like in some of the some of the songs. And um you've guys been doing this for a while, right? Maybe how many years? Yeah, we well this particular project. Yeah, so Merlot Merlot Embargo has been around since 2016. Mm -hmm. Um but we've been making music together in other capacities for 2009, 2009 I guess. 2009, 2010, something like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. yeah awesome. Uh, but our yeah. first full album for Merlot Embargo was 2016. Yeah. And then we've been releasing singles since then. And then we're currently <laughs> working on our second full album. So, but yeah, everything's, there's a wide variety of sounds within those, those releases. And that's partly my fault. I have, since I was young uh, and doing music and you know, people would say, oh, you're gonna make it. You're gonna like, whatever. And I can never fit into any kind of like genre. And I know that's the singer songwriter cliche to say, but uh, I think it was also my bullheadedness. Um, I, 
I never wanted any two of my songs to sound the same, even when I was just writing as, you know, in college with my guitar, my poor guitar skills. Um, Cause I've been writing since I was 18, um, writing songs. And that was one thing. I never wanted my songs to sound like anyone else's. I never wanted them to sound like each other, but that can sometimes backfire because if you don't have one sound, then, you know, it doesn't, yeah. I think we have a sound. I don't know. Oh, I, I definitely know. reckon you have a sound. Like, yeah. I, could, I, could, I, could, I could, I could hear, like, from someone that's never, I, like, before I, I we discussed to do this interview, I'd, n- I'd not really discovered your music before. So, um, yeah, I really noticed, I noticed that. And the songs I liked the most was one called Storms oh, and yeah. one called Head yeah. Above Water. I really thought those two. Um, probably because ju- th- that's just me personally. They're beautiful. They're, they're all beautiful songs, but um, I really like messages in songs like that. I and mean, that's just me personally. Like I like the, you know, I, I like to be inspired or <laughs> like encouraged yeah. or like something like that. And um, yeah, I found those songs to be quite like um, the, the lyrics were quite meaningful and the music kind of just takes you on that journey that the lyrics are taking you on. That's, that was my impression of it. Thanks. I appreciate Thanks. that. Yeah, I have a hard time writing songs if I'm not inspired by something. And that's why most of my songs aren't very, like, peppy. Because <laughs> I'm usually writing when I'm uh, moody or feeling deeply about something. And yeah. not usually when I'm happy-go-lucky and in a good mood and stuff. <laughs> so usually if I, we want, like, a more up-tempo song, I, I usually have to push Scarlett to, like... Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> To like uh, so change hard. something or or I just don't feel like writing just, music the, when I'm yeah. when I'm like happy. <laughs> what what, do, you, what do you think that, that why do you think that is? Like what do you think? Um You're an emo kid. That's why I'm about. emo. I'm emo at heart, I think. I'm a goth kid at heart. I'm like I just emote and um <clears throat> I feel things very deeply. I'm a Scorpio that's another like very like witchy vibes going on Mm -hmm. and uh I like so I don't it's not like I don't talk about that kind of stuff either like even just in conversation it's hard for me to just talk about just like you know superficial stuff um I'm ADHD so I get bored really easily that's another thing I I like I'm going real deep into the why I guess but um I just think you I mean to me it seems like it's it's because you just feel more deeply and so that's what you like you you feel sad emotions more deeply than like happy emotions for I will reason. also say that so you, that's what you tend to write about songwriting has been my coping mechanism for my like all of those things so it's in the same way that someone might journal in the same way that someone might go to therapy <laughs> yeah. I write songs so like that's literally my I've kind of like painted myself into that corner of my writing music is also my self therapy and my processing emotions. So when I am feeling good and feeling positive and feeling like I've got things settled, like there's not really that impetus or that drive to write because writing is my, yeah, my processing, I guess. So I think that's another reason too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can, I can resonate with that. I think that's a good, I think it's a common theme for people, um, for songwriters. Yeah, um, and within the t- within the tour, if you guys do do you write? Do you come up with the main thing of the song, or does to Jeff? Do you come up with some stuff and like what's the? Yeah, process? so so usually, uh, I mean, ninety nine percent of the time so far, Scarlett's been kind of writing the song on her own, and then I'll play producer and and kind of take it from there and is you know obviously it's a back and forth and we rearrange it or, or whatever uh, mm-hmm. but it all, it, they almost all start with her I, I'd like to start doing a little more like co-writing I've kind of wanted to do that for a long time but I'm, I'm a terrible songwriter like I just don't have that I don't know what it is I, I always I'm a very like detail um, yeah detail oriented uh, structured kind of dude and that's what works well for us so, because I'm the big picture person. And once I get a song written, I don't want to look at it again ever. So if if we if Jeff wasn't working on these songs and producing them, 
no one would ever hear them. Like there is no way, like I would have sung it and then that's it. And that's it. Like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to fix it. I don't want to like all the hours and hours he spends recording all the different lines and, you know, editing and producing is I could not I could not stare at a song for that long mm. so and he probably enjoys it too oh yeah, yeah. that's exactly right yeah. yeah probably a little I yeah that's you know probably enjoy it a little too much and I get better about it. just put it out there as it is sometimes but you know the studio is his other woman I'd like to say yeah what what a great <laughs> I'm okay with that I'm okay with that <laughs> I, I, are you guys a couple yeah, we're married. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. literally, literally. Yeah. yeah, I'll be in the living room having wine and watching, you know, some period drama, and Jeff will be pr- producing all of the songs. Yeah. So storms, she wrote about me. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Storms was a song for him. Yeah. We had just experienced an yeah, earthquake. Not about me, for me, I guess. It was for you. Yeah. I wrote it for you. Yeah. We had just experienced an earthquake, as we do, as we tend to do in California, and. Uh, I was in the shower where I, I actually, a lot of my songs, the first hook comes to me in the shower. I'll just be kind of scatting or whatever while I'm showering as I do. And the line will just hit me and then I'll play around with it. Bathroom acoustics being what they are. But yeah, so Storms was written for Jeff. For Jeff. Um, I think probably we had just had a fight or something, which we tend to do as well. Yeah, we used to fight a lot about music too. Oh, it's hard. Yeah, it was, it was like uh, kind of we got a little bit better once we kind of became more low embargo, I suppose. Mm-hmm. But we used to have this Christmas band with some other friends, and we'd put out a Christmas rec, you know, quick and dirty Christmas record every year, and mm-hmm. we would like arrange songs or whatever. And like, man, we used to like really just like butt heads all the time about what <laughs> what the arrangement should be. And I'm a terrible collaborator. <laughs> I'm a I have a chip on my shoulder. I'm a, a feminist who finds it very difficult to work with men sometimes because I have, I mean, we've all experienced so much like kind of being steamrolled by men in the workplace too. So like, I think I'm ultra sensitive, ultra paranoid about being steamrolled a lot of times. So if I had a, an opinion and it wasn't what people wanted to do, I, you know, it was hard for me to let it go, to mm-hmm. let an idea go. So collaborating has been a work in progress for me to be able to stand up for myself still, because I did have to, there was a lot of stuff that was built in that was me standing up for myself that was legitimate and not just in my head, but it also meant it was very emotional, more emotional for me, I guess, in, in that sense, because it was personal, because it was, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like my elbowing my way into the, the man's game there a little bit, but I think it's harder when it's art as well. And it's that, like you said, it's that personal thing. Yeah, and if it's a strategy, who cares, right? Now but, you're taking it into yeah. a business realm where, yeah. you know, you need, like you need a commercial product at the same time as your mm-hmm. art. And and yeah. that can be hard if you don't have that objective nature or you, yeah, you might. And uh, it's, it's a little bit harder too. Like, not, I mean, I think being a, a married music duo is great, but I think, were you to like work with a different producer other than me like I think it's you probably feel a little less free to like say what you really think you know and maybe not ultimately but maybe in the beginning you know I think Mm -hmm. you're very comfortable telling me like no I don't like it that way I don't know I'm pretty comfortable telling a lot of people how I feel but But I will say that it's less personal like I know if I'm working with somebody on a business level it's like you know what you're in can I say asshole? Yeah. <laughs> You're an yeah. asshole, but like I'm once we're done, we're done. I don't have to deal with you after this. So it's like mm. I'm gonna bite my tongue, get this song done or whatever, and move on. But like knowing that it's relationships with you or with our friends that was like long term, I'm like, okay, if this is going to be a repeated situation, like I'm going to make sure that my opinion is known and that this isn't, you know, I want to make sure that our relationship, I'm not like swall like yeah, standing up for myself or you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's I think these are things that people don't realize. That's one of the reasons why I want to make this podcast is to kind of talk about some of the stuff that goes into music. That's not just the music. Um, yeah. Right. So right. much, Unfortunately, know, it's like 75% of the stuff is on music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, um, you know, it would be great if you could just 
I don't know, not have to do all these things, but maybe that's why we do it because it teaches us how to, how to, I don't know, better, better interact in society and have good <laughs> relationships and like it yeah. teaches you things along the journey. And oh, yeah. to get that finished product, like, like I can, I can resonate with what you said, Scarlett, about your, um, uh, like you, you, you make the song and then you're like, I'm done. That's my, that's my bit. I don't want to look at it anymore or anything. And, um, I kind of had a similar experience when I started making my music a few years ago. Um, so I'm just do, I just write them on guitar and it was like, well, that's how it came to me. So that's how the song is. (laughs) Right. And I literally was just going to record it like that. And I went to a studio, um, because I was with a band and they were like, oh, we know this other, we know this guy that can record us. And so the band worked on the songs like my worked on the parts of my songs and we went in there and did a, a recording. And one of the songs that um, I really wanted to do, we just didn't have time in that day. And this was my very first time experiencing any of this. And I didn't know how it works and what was, I didn't, I didn't know how any of this stuff works. I just thought, oh, we all go in and we just, we all play it at the same time. And then the song is made. <laughs> and the yeah. producer was like, oh, are you going to do the vocals today? And that was like, why wouldn't we? <laughs> like, yeah. like, why wouldn't we all just sing along? Yeah. That's how we do it. Like, um, I don't think he realized like that. I didn't know anything about it. I'm, I'm probably sure that he did by the end of the day. Um, <laughs> and then he goes, and so then after we all had all finished these songs, I was like, oh, I've really got this other song that I really like, it was a more personal song to me. And I was like, I really want to do this song. So I called him up and I said, can I just come in and just do another recording? And I was expecting it to just be acoustic guitar. And that's what he did. He set up the microphones for me and just recorded the acoustic guitar. And then he goes at the end of it, he said, oh, what do you want to do with this song? And I said, oh, I just want you to like, <laughs> do what you did to the other songs, just mix it a bit and I'll put it on Spotify. And he goes, oh, he goes, I wouldn't do that. And I was like, what do you mean? Because <laughs> he just finished telling me it was a great song. He was like, oh, wow, this is a really great song. And I was like, yeah, I think it is. <laughs> and then he told me, don't do that. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I oh, know you need to work on it more. And I was like, what do you mean? Work on it more. Like, this is the song. It's my voice and a guitar. <laughs> And that's how I started doing the electronic music because I didn't, I've, I've had, I had tooled around with Pro Tools before mm. a long time ago, maybe 10 years before that and continuously hit this wall of like, it's so hard, it's so frustrating. Everything, would, the thing would crash, the computer would crash. I would, you know, oh. like that constant frustration, right? And then I would yeah. lose my will to live. <laughs> my <laughs> joy. Yeah, I actually got, I got suspended from Twitter because in a, in a drunken fit, I, I, said I would uh, do something bad to Pro Tools and they, they I think the, the robots flagged that account and uh, oh, yeah. uh, it crashed on me like three times in like 10 minutes or something. I was so pissed. But uh, yeah, so they, uh, I don't have that account yeah. anymore. Well, now, now, I look, now I use Logic. So I've moved away. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Bye Pro Tools. Bye bye. Crashes a lot less on Apple systems. That's for sure. Yeah. But it was just, um, mm-hmm. yeah. And having someone else do all that for me was a big, a big eye opener that hang on a minute, I don't have to do all of this stuff. And I mean, I have to pay someone to do it. So it's great that you guys have got your, <laughs> got yeah. your relationship. I know it's a, it's a toss up, right? You have to, if you pay for it, at least you don't have to worry about it. If somebody else is doing it. It can oftentimes get done a lot faster, but then you have to pay for it. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. It's a hard. Well, I mean, we end up paying somewhat anyway, cause I, I, I mean, I do all the producing for us. Mm-hmm. Um, well, sometimes we have our bandmates produce too, but um, uh, I I try not to mix our music. Mm-hmm. I won't say I, that's exclusively true. Sometimes I do it just because we don't have the money for that song or something. But I I definitely prefer sending out my song to someone else for for at least mm-hmm. at least a mix to get you know some outside ears on it. Yeah. Um, but so even even in that when I when I'm producing, there's still some money spent on other things. Well, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, well, you, you, your teamwork is obviously, it's a very evident that it's working and it's, it's, it's great that you're able to, to do that and, um, you know, keep your, how long have you guys been together? How long have you been married for? Uh, it's going to be 10 years this, in like two months. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. Well, and then we were yeah. together three years before we got married. So, yeah. so 13 years, I guess, total. Wow. That's fantastic. Cool. Lucky 13. Yeah. Well, keep going. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe um, I can ask you some things about like one of the things I want to explore in this show is um, asking people about what does music do for you that kind of nothing else in the world does for you? Like, is there something that music 
provides for you that you think nothing else can fill that void? Um, well, as far as like, I mean, there's kind of sort of two aspects of it for me, like performing is one thing, which I love and, and nothing feels like performing, mm. you know, for a crowd, um, you know, whether it's your own music or, or not, I, I, you know, I think we're small enough that, you know, we haven't really had the experience of a crowd singing back our songs to us, but, you know, even like playing in a cover band or like whatever, and having, having the crowd really enjoy that is, is mm -hmm. an, an amazing feeling. Uh, but also like, you know, making your own music, um, writing songs, it's, it's like gratifying. Um, I don't know. I suppose it's like, why do we make any art? We make it because we want to feel something or because it makes us feel something, I guess. Um, I don't know. I mean, I mean, mine is twofold. For me, as I've said before, it's an emotional release a lot of times and helps me process uh, that side of myself so that I don't just explode into a million pieces. But then the other thing is um, it feels like I am putting something on this earth that is unique that will last, I guess like a legacy a little bit when you have created something, especially now that it's so easy to put things online and, and put them out there to be heard by other people. And that will last beyond yourself on this earth, I guess it's um, like, he's, like Jeff said, gratifying in that way. And, and it feels like even if nothing ever came of it, uh, profession wise or or something that we have created something and it's there and it will be there and so that's pretty yeah yeah and it's, it's, Life it's pretty, pretty amazing that you that we can do yeah. that isn't it? it really yeah. is yeah and that's something like you're proud of for a long time you know mm -hmm. I, 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 it's just you know you go back and listen to mm -hmm. old stuff and you know it's really nice to hear it when it still holds up. <laughs> I mean, it's like publishing a book or or yeah. having a kid, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, where I know, you, yeah. you know, you have created something that other that's tangible, that other people can experience, that connects you with other people, that potentially helps them to. Yeah, I think, I think, sorry to interrupt. But no, go ahead. To process as yeah, well. Yeah, I was going to say that the, the, the realization or, or seeing or having someone tell you about uh what what your music made them feel uh mm. is is pretty cool too mm. and do you get a lot of fans kind of contacting you about your songs like how it's affected sometimes them? i mean we're pretty like i said we're pretty small time so we get some but you know yeah no, i won't say a huge amount but um i i think so i think we have i mean i have a comment section on facebook yeah. it's pretty lengthy i guess yeah. As far as, you know, the songs, like you, like I said before, you know, a lot of my songs have a message to them. So they do tend to speak to people um, theme wise or, or message wise. And so it does, which is very gratifying and, and affirming that uh, it's not just my own perspective or emotions or feelings of the world, but that it other people identify with that and feel the same way sometimes. So yeah. you feel less alone in yeah. that sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's just something amazing about social media that it's uh, given us that opportunity to like directly connect with people. Like yeah. how cool is Even it? across that? the world. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like we can do this for one, but yeah. like yeah. someone can hear your song you know, and they can, like, I mean, I get messages from people from other countries and they send it in Italian or something and, you know, you can just click a button uh -huh. and you can translate it. I know. Yeah. Translate is that too. Yeah. yeah. How bizarre. I mean, even on Facebook, it just has its own translator now. So people yeah. connect with you from all over the world and it's bizarre. Like I, I, I found that to be incredible. Yeah. Um, it's like sci-fi era where, you know, everybody is, has yeah. translators and we have like the Star Trek Universal don't, Translator. You don't really realize how incredible that is to be able to do. Just immediately communicate with somebody that speaks a different language than you. It um, is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It um 
Okay. So what about like with your songwriting and stuff, do you, um, are you the sort of person that says, okay, I'm going to write a song because I want to write a song or do you have to be in the mood and the song sort of comes to you? Like, can you sort of sit down and say, I'm gonna, like, if I said to you, could you just write me a song right now? Could you, do you think you could do that? Not that you need to write me a song now, but <laughs> like if, if someone said you have to write a song, you have to pump out a song today. Could you, could you do that? Yeah, I think I could. Yeah. I think you could, but you usually don't like to write that way. That's not usually how I write, but if it's been a while since I've written, then I can sometimes do that sort of thing. Like the other day I wrote a song because I hadn't written in a while, but mainly because we have so many songs on the back burner that I feel like um, it's not necessary, first of all, but at the same time, and also I guess I hadn't really had time or not experienced any super deep emotions that like that was all I could do was just sit and write a song. But I did just pick up the guitar and I was like, you know, I haven't written in a while. I'm just going to play and see what comes out. And I think it came out pretty good. I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. So it'll be a song that we produce at some point. And it was just literally just uh, 20 minutes noodling on the guitar and just kind of like I came up with a hook and a couple phrases that I liked that worked well and and then basically wrote, you know, a, a shell of a song that we could definitely do um, later. And so I don't know. I, yeah, I, I think I could, because remember we did the, the songwriting challenge with Jessica Gerhardt yes, that's and, true. and that was, yeah, and we, it was definitely, a they a gave us prompt, a theme, yeah. like a prompt. So yeah, I, I actually think I do like writing that way. And, and actually sense. like the ones that like were several of the songs that are going to be on our coming upcoming record are uh, that experience. Little so songwriting course, challenge. songwriting works yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I definitely have to be alone. Okay. I can't write with other people in the room. It's really hard. Yeah, it's, I find that strange as well. Like coming up with the ideas, it's good to I, like I. It's I think it's good to expose yourself to different different things, and see if that works for you. I, well, that's what that's what I like to do. So yeah. do you do you co-write a lot, or do you write solo, or how do you how do you work, Marie? No, so I just well, it's all been me. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, well, last year I started hooking up with another person to sort of do something else. Like we mm -hmm. were like, oh, let's write, um, let's write songs for, um, uh, like to sell the songs to other people. Maybe right. you know, like yeah. we wrote some country music songs, <laughs> yeah, which is not my genre. Um, but I was like, mate, anyone can write one of these. He's <laughs> got a very specific formula. Yes. Yeah, and um, it was it was great, but like unfortunately, he just passed away this year. Oh um, my gosh! I'm so here. sorry. Yeah, it was very um. Uh, unexpected and so we kind of wrote three songs together that we kind of I'm not sure what to do with those songs now yeah, oh, geez, oh, it's a bit of a bizarre now. situation uh but yeah that was that was the first time I've ever written songs with anyone else right and what he would do it he, he he'd come over and tell me about his ex-wife and all these things that had happened to him and just be talking and talking and I'm like this guy just talked and I would just write down all the things right that he talks about because he's had all these different experiences with these. I've never had any of these bad relationships. And he's like, oh, my, my right. wife cheated on me. She get like, and we wrote a song about uh, this is great stuff. This is great. Keep, well, yeah, that's, keep that's, going, that's, keep going. It's like, like you said, like his therapy. So I'm writing down what he's saying and making yeah. it and rhyming it type of thing. And then he's coming up with the guitar and he, we wrote a song called um, Why'd You Have to Give Me the Bird? Like in <laughs> Australia, I don't know if you call the. the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Um, anyway. <laughs> Cause he's like, he's like, you wouldn't believe it. I saw my ex-wife and she just flipped me the bird. And I was like, that's a great, he's like, why'd you have to give me the bird? Like, no, that's not the bird. No, I'm just no we say flip, flip me the bird. Like, you know, they flip me the bird, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things in, in Australia we have opposite to you guys, right? Like <laughs> the piece well, of that yeah. is opposite yeah. to us. That one is the that, same. I mean, no, the that's same. The definitely same. the same. I, I was just yeah. thinking of the uh, the flight of the Concords. Uh, oh, I you know, thought that was Napoleon bird. Dynamite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's a bit of flight of the Concords mixed with Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. It's kind of cool like, though. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. So that that I I don't know. I like I like finding out what other people do, but for, most of the time the songs for me just come. It, it's almost like a line comes to me when I'm doing something else. I might be driving my car. Yeah. Um, yeah. or it's often when I have to go somewhere else and I'm in a hurry. Mm, <laughs> yes. Thank God for audio notes on your phone. Seriously. I mean, thank, yeah, message. exactly. Oh like, my God. 
I mean, sometimes I just put this, like if I feel that I'm like, oh, the song's coming to me and I have to run out the door, I just put the audio thing on and press record. And as I'm driving, I can just record what I'm thinking. And, it, and sometimes that's become the song and you would yeah. never remember it otherwise. Never. Yeah ever yeah and one of the things i like to i feel like that because that's that's often like the song in in the first know, stage the first stage it really i think a lot of times that captures like what you're feeling more than as it progresses along so one of the things i like to do that I've, I've, i started doing a few years ago is like just importing that into like my pro tool session so i can always refer back to it and like i because i don't want to like I mean, even if we do change it, it was nice to have that to say, oh, this is kind of what the original thing was. And maybe well, at some a, point. That's maybe a great idea. Point, yeah, 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 a lot of times I'll even like beat map it and and just like map it out on that original, uh, you know, on that original audio recording and stretch it or compress it or whatever. And, and you know, fit that into the grid and yeah, and make it happen right alongside. Well, that was, I mean, yeah. What? I. I mean, I'm sure that a lot of what he does, it's so genius. He does so much. And like, I worry that I have made it so much more work because of some of our initial, of my initial meltdowns where he'd come to me with like, so I, I uh, worked on that song that you sent me. I'd be like, that sounds nothing like what I sent you. What did you do to it? Uh, yeah. And so, and poor Jeff. It's he cooler. Gets, cooler. He gets the big eyes like, I thought it sounded good. Sorry. Like, what do I do with this emotional woman? Um, but uh, yeah, so that was, he definitely started doing that. But I think it's a well, self-preservation self thing too. Maybe so, but I'm I, terrible. But I think, like I said, even if it does change, and like a lot of times it has changed. Like I've, I've made her bump the tempo, you know, 20, Absolutely. 20 or 30 BPM on some songs. Yeah, I've gotten really good at, um, at letting him. Um, but uh, but I think it's good to refer back to it for yeah. for for anyone involved. But yeah, for, I've gotten a lot better about accepting notes and That's changes. So that's also true. That's that helps. But yeah, it, it sounds like you get you you you're going through a process there to, like you know, you, part of the process is also you're learning who who you are, and what yeah. and, and what what works for you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like, well, yeah, why do why do I don't know to not that not that we not that everything has to be a why, but like sometimes you it like that's teaching you something. Why you're getting so upset about something or um, true. You know, yeah like i've had the experience sometimes like that where you've got so uh in the process you're like thinking this is going to be terrible this is going to be terrible but then at the end it's really good and then that teaches you that hang on a minute next time i, I shouldn't be so anxious about that thing because in the end it might be really good <laughs> that's right yeah. that's so yeah. true yeah and, and you don't know unless you try it and sometimes mm -hmm. you toss it out too you know toss out mm -hmm. the, the thing you tried um yeah. you know even on like a a micro level whether it's with an individual instrument part or on a macro level with like you know your whole idea for the arrangement but i think the other thing realizing that like just because we do the song one way here doesn't mean that that's the only way we'll ever do that song yeah. because it's our music yeah. you know we could always reproduce it we could always remix it we could always do it acoustically well, we, we could always we've done it with a few of the songs <laughs> yeah. yeah so and i think knowing that now it feels less permanent and less like pigeonholing a song into a certain feel or a certain and i think that's allowed me to like kind of release a little bit and let go of a song and not be so precious about it um uh knowing that look there's nothing nobody's taking anything from you nobody is is doing anything that like you can't we can't adjust later or we can't go back to and recreate later if we wanted to if we wanted to you know we could go back to any of these songs and reproduce them and do it release re-release a different version of it you know and so even if it's in video form or or just a live show or something it still feels like you know don't be so uptight I guess <laughs> yeah yeah I, I think in this this climate like it's good to have those options to have lots of because to, some sometimes you just need a lot of content yes right? that's true. And a, and a song that's is true. like one thing 
So mm-hmm. if one idea could give you an acoustic version and then, yeah. you know, this remix version or sometimes like, That's exactly uh, like right. yeah. there's some things I just share to my email people, right? Like I have some fans yeah. that are on my email and I don't send it to everybody else. And I'm just like, what right. do you think about this? Um, some, like I just, I'm going to release a song this Friday and I asked them about my the album art because that's the thing where I get stuck a bit like, um, right. they're all good. <laughs> like the five <laughs> versions are all good. Wow. Like, oh, or, it's so true. You know, or, or knowing that also just because I like it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to like it. Like, and mm. um, so, yeah. you know, and you wouldn't necessarily show that to everybody, but it's great if you can build up a fan base where you're like, um, and the fans yeah, yeah, really yeah. love that as well because yeah. they're included in it. And I've had a lot of people email yeah. me back and say, oh, thanks so much for asking me. That was great. That was really oh. great. Or they felt, they feel like, oh, f- like, you know, like special that you've asked them that because you're not asking everybody. You're just asking yeah. a few people that I, you know, you know, and there's actually a few times where I didn't actually even ask. I only sent the email to the, to the people who responded to the first email. Yeah. Oh, wow. no, yeah. right so you narrow it down yeah. like because i have about two thousand people in my email list yeah. so then right. wow. a few people like maybe 50 responded to something and then i only sent the next email back to them as a as a response like hey thanks for thanks for commenting about like i asked them out of three like i had three songs off the album that i'm thinking of, will be a single which song mm-hmm. do you like and don't send them the whole song just like a little you know 20 second of each song right and um, then when the, when the song comes out, those people feel like, because they did actually, it's not like tricky them or anything, like they, they, right. they're included in the process. They're like, oh, you chose the song that I liked to be yeah. the single. Like it's really a, a, an amazing tool and something that like for me, it helps me be a bit more objective when you, when you just think, oh, everything's good. <laughs> it's all good. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah. Getting some outside of, outside of real deal opinions is, uh, is helpful sometimes. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of decisions that we have to make. It can be very overwhelming, you know, to do it all by yourself or to be the, the one making all these decisions, even just to out outsource some of those things is a load off. You know, you just like mm-hmm. let someone else make that decision. They love being a part of it, having that ownership or that, that investment, that input, um and music is a relational thing it's a it's a connective thing and um yeah I think it's important that we remember that it we're not just making the music for ourselves but we're making it for other people as well and including in, them in it is yes a big part and, of that. And, and like that I just find that again so amazing that we can do that through it's only mm-hmm. through social media that you can kind of yeah yeah that's right I you know do all I that know. and yeah it's so so cool so um I wanted to ask you about one of your songs um the head above water song you I was listening to that a few days ago and today um was that about something particular like is that was that what inspired you to kind of write that song I wrote that um for my sister she was going through a divorce at the time mm. and I was, you know, we're several states away and it was really hard as a sister to be so far away from her going through something so difficult. Um, And I definitely, and I was also just kind of stuck feeling helpless, hopeless and like, and just hurting for her and with her. And I think that that's, and I, it was again, one of my like, how do I process all of these feelings? when I can't just jump on a plane and go be with her. Um, And also what can I say to her? Like what even, there's nothing that can be said really, except just keep moving, just stay afloat, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that's all that needs to happen right now, you know? I think that song's a very powerful message for people. When did you put that out? Was it a while ago or? Just that was on yeah, our initial was, album was, on was, our first album 2016 so. yeah. yeah yeah right well it's a great song like thank you yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll what i'll try to do in this show is put a like couple of little clips of songs in there like we can put about 30 seconds or 20 seconds without busting yeah. the youtube sure. algorithm <laughs> with yeah. oh YouTube right <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> some things in life are gonna knock you off your feet some things will taste more of the bitter than the sweet. 
you know it's it's really creepy how good it is we um so we like i said we we did this like live stream show weekly for yeah. about, about a year and a half and you know you play your own music enough times and you gotta start doing covers right so a lot of it ended up being like you know just cover songs we did for the week or whatever and like that algorithm like catches everything we we change the key we're just doing it acoustically it doesn't matter like it we get emails every week yeah you know about, this, has like, this has been flagged for like and they, and they don't usually take it down usually they'll just like put content ID on it and, and whatever yeah. but or like this is ads have been added to this they, it's like okay that's fine yeah, that's yeah. fine I'm cool I'm cool with that mm. but it was it's, it was a... it was creepy how good it, yeah. it was how they can identify yeah even within an hour of like yes like 12 a, songs yeah. you know they're like well oh yep. hang on song right yep. here <laughs> it might be way to reply at it. They're just stopping minute it. Mark. yeah yeah well I think when you when you upload a, a thing it checks it and it gives yeah. you a probably very, that point, it yeah. gives you a kind of a a cue like whether it's been flagged or not like you can tell from just even yeah, uploading we, it now well because these were all like live they were all live uh you know live streams live so stream. they that's would, true so it's not like we got the feed we didn't upload it we like yeah did it you know and yeah. then just like the let YouTube it sit there live, yeah. So. so yeah yeah it's, just uh, fyi to people planning on doing that <laughs> in the future but yeah Oh, good. Well, you've probably got plenty of your own songs. People love to hear your own songs. Yeah. I mean, it's the problem is it might flag your own songs. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, it does that to me uh, I think it did that it actually. Does. Yeah, yeah, it does. Because we have uh, content ID on, I think, CD every, Baby. On, through CD Baby. Yeah. yeah. Um, so CD Baby will flag our own I, songs I, on I, YouTube. There's been a couple, I think I've taken that off now. There was a reason that I did that and I forgot what it was for it was for some music mm -hmm. library or something I can't remember I don't know but um mm -hmm. yeah uh, anyway oh it's good all right and so you're working on a new album now is that what you you guys are working on okay. yeah yep so we finally we spend most of the pandemic doing these live stream shows there's a lot of work because you know we're working full-time and and mm -hmm. having, we have a daughter and whatever right so we're you know busy people but um so we didn't get a, a lot of cycles during most of the pandemic to actually work on the record but now that we're kind of like moving out well a lot of out. these songs were written during the pandemic in fact during the right. early Motivated, months yeah. of the pandemic they were written so i had had an album's worth of con of songs ready uh just a few months in and then our live streams became sort of a fundraising effort for our next album and so a lot of the fans that tuned in helped invest in this album and so that's how we've been able to pay our bandmates and yeah to... and that was a big thing that you that was a great idea that you wanted to do uh because you know musicians were the first ones that one of the first ones that lost work you know oh, during the pandemic, sure. right and l the last record we made and everything we've done up until now we we haven't really paid our band you know i mean they're our close they're our, friends they're our friends so they do it and they're like they're the, you know they're part of us but a lot of our projects we just do for fun but anyway we but... thought with this we would we would really like to you know honor honor their uh their talent and and, and time and their time and and mm -hmm. so we scarlet had the idea to kind of use that as a fundraiser which was great so we turned our weekly live streams into a fundraiser specifically for the album and because i had already written all these songs just a few months into the pandemic it was sort of organic and they were hearing some of these songs as we wrote them and um like we were talking them through it the entire time and so now it's like kind of getting down to the nitty-gritty now we can finally start recording and what well, we have been recording and producing these songs so by the end of this year, we're going to waterfall release it. So yeah, we'll probably have, let's say, two to three songs out by the end of the year. We'll probably do them, maybe not a hundred percent all in a row, but you know, probably at least three or four before the before the full album. Yeah, probably more cool. than that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But yeah, we recorded all here in this in this room actually. Mm -hmm. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Pretty exciting. Yeah. There's a drum kit right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. we're sitting on it <laughs> Actually, yeah, I I am, sitting on the drum i'm yeah. sitting yeah. on the drum seat right now in fact yeah. i think i was spinning it a little too much i'm like is this thing gonna fall off any second that'll be a fun little clip for the the blooper at the end yeah <laughs> <laughs> blooper reel exactly oh, your space looks really great you've got some um soundproofing panels there i can see in the back is that what yeah those, they look really yeah, cool it was like, a little uh it was a little dead for a long time and those ones are kind of a good compromise i think 
Jeff yeah. had this space. So he owned this house when we met and this space was already here. It was sort of like a little out external or not attached, unattached little room, apartment sort of thing. And uh, so he'd been working on it. He's been working on this space for well, since before we were yeah, together. So, I mean, so. We, I, I'd always had bands rehearsing here, right? Mm -hmm. But it was probably like right about when we started doing this Christmas band I mentioned earlier that I kind of, we kind of got into like home recording and, and, mm -hmm. Um, and so that, at that point, it was kind of like, well, maybe let's actually turn it into a good sounding space too, rather than, I mean, it, I kind of had done some soundproofing, mm -hmm. just to the wall and stuff, but it wasn't necessary. I just a place for me to practice really um, until, until we kind of got into the Christmas thing and wanted to start recording ourselves a little more. And then with the visuals for the live streams, we're like, well, how do we make this space look a little better? Yeah. <laughs> it's right now it's very usable for recording, but visibly it's yeah, not so aesthetically little... pleasing. So it's gradually, gradually got better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that's great because yeah, it's hard, it's, hard, it's hard sometimes when you're starting, like you're trying to do it, you know, people are gluing eggshells to the egg, egg cartons yep. to the wall and, you know, you're yep. trying to make it. Make it work. You've got old mattresses up against the yep. the thing. Oh, DIY, yeah. yeah, DIY yeah. kind of. Actually, yeah. you know, we've recorded stuff in here, and we've done some live recordings too. Um, one of which we had like the musicians spread throughout our whole house, and like this was kind of like the control room. So yeah. I had my cable, the headphone extensions run all over the place, and the best upright bass sound I ever recorded was in our closet in our bedroom, <laughs> and oh, it wow. sounded phenomenal because the clothes are like a, a foot thick on all sides. You I know? got a lot of clothes. <laughs> And like, Mate, it, that's it just really started. good soundproofing, actually. That's <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no reflections in there. I just and like it's for the bass, you know, with the long wavelengths. It just it worked great. I'm just imagining him in the dark in the closet. Like, well, well, there was with, a, there with was all a the light, clothes coming, yeah. but it was pretty tight. Yeah. It was pretty tight with an upright bass in yeah. there. Yeah, poor guy. Yeah, we had like a horn player in every room, and you know, and it was it was wow. fun. So, how many people are in your band then? Anywhere from two to. Eight? I don't know. Well, we have like kind of a core group that has consistently been a part of our band this whole time. And they're also who. Yeah. So I'd say like so that's, six, really. Yeah. And there, I usually have a few of them. Yeah. I usually have them produce one of, the, so they each produced a song on the first album as well. And they're going to each produce a song for this album. So I wanted them to have, they're all so incredibly skilled and talented, both with their instruments and with producing. So I really wanted them to be able to give of themselves that way. And I wanted their skills and talents to be shared through our album as much as possible. And uh, also to give, these songs different treatment so that it wasn't just like us two yeah um yeah so I'd, I'd say we there's like a, a core of like six kind of people that we like if we were to do a cd release show that's yep. probably who we yeah who we'd have but we also have a lot of other people we get to play horns and strings and and mm -hmm. you know other instruments and backup vocals and whatever um and occasionally we've had to sub out like drums and it's usually another friend of ours, you know, so it's like we've had a few different drummers throughout the course, but yeah, so we just, yeah, the music community in LA is very, very thick and very rich and mm. so we're very, very lucky. Um, yeah. That and we can call them not only our bandmates, but our yeah, close I mean, friends, good friends with them so too, yeah. that's mm. another thing yeah i mean that that's so that's so awesome like just to have that pool of talent around yeah. and yeah. be, be immersed honestly in like it's it's like my music friends our band whatever like uh, they are like so, some of maybe the most enriching people in our lives i, I yeah. think you know yeah uh, they're our closest for friends sure. for sure i mean it's it's hard to to connect i mean <clears throat> yeah some of our closest friends for sure like it's yeah you can identify with other gig gigging gig workers i guess yeah connect with them but they're not all musicians all of our, not all of our friends are musicians no but we only all... we only befriend musicians <laughs> <laughs> you're like stop what can you play before you yeah you play an instrument okay stop talking to me <laughs> like, wait, i've got a recorder <laughs> yeah no, that doesn't count <laughs> they're all pretty creative though that's that's they're yeah. creators they're all creators yeah i think yeah. as you get older in life you tend to just like you put your pool of friends tends to get smaller but you you get tighter with those people right you get more yeah. like you get more 
I don't know, less yeah. tolerant of idiots in your life and yeah. people. You've gone just... through shit together, like yeah. <laughs> over exactly. the course of like so much life. You yeah. just you've really and to still come out of it together. I mean, you know, our our my parents aren't really musicians. Your dad plays a little bit, but our, our bass player was his parents are in a you know some not famous band but semi-famous i guess but they they um i mean they well his, his dad passed away recently and but they but him and their bass player have been friends since like the 60s you know and they're mm -hmm. they've been playing music for that together in the same band for that long it's like mm -hmm. incredible to be in you such know? a like a hub for music and musicians is pretty incredible but yeah Wow, yeah. I'm jealous. <laughs> I want yeah, to come to LA. <laughs> oh, please do. Anytime you do, shout us out and we'll show you yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, jam with you. We'll have a live session here. That'd be fun. Or you can sleep on our couch too if you want. Oh, that's good. <laughs> if you don't mind, if you don't mind, two chickens. I'm, I'm leaving four. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Two dogs, four chickens, and a five year old. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four chickens. You're more than welcome. You're more yeah. than welcome. Cool. But they're not inside the well, house. Three, chi yes. three chickens. We had uh, an unfortunate event, but yeah. yeah, yeah, you'll have to put them on the record like a chicken yeah. scratch yeah. or something kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. they probably, they probably already are on a few records, yeah. but un unknown to us. <laughs> Just, People are like, What's that? You're like, your mixing guy will be like, What's that little squawk in the back? <laughs> in the main vocal, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Oh, it's been very fun to chat to you and, and talk about your music yeah, and your songwriting yeah. and um, what a great combination, a great duo. And um, it's, you know, like for your songwriting team and your band is amazing. Your, your song, I can wish you all the best with your album coming up. It sounds exciting. Yeah, Thank you so much. so much. This was so incredible to be, to again, connect with someone on the other side of the world and also just connect with another musician, another creator. It's always always a a gift so thank yeah. you for having us we'll have to, we'll have to make it the first someday yeah yeah that well, you can sleep you, you can sleep on my couch <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, just couch trade i don't have any yeah. chickens that's okay <laughs> that's all right <laughs> probably good but yeah. well, you might have some kangaroos around i suppose so you know. yeah we, we we do but like we i could drive you to where the kangaroos are they're not hopping around in the in the streets in the backyard no. <laughs> yeah but they are, they are just, they do just go wild in some areas. Like you, you I could drive 20 minutes from my house and find some kangaroos. There's, there's not like, there's like lots of different sizes, right? There's little, little wallaby kangaroos and big ones and everything. We right? wouldn't and, actually want to run into a kangaroo though, right? They're like, kind of not, kind of like deer. they like foxy or something? No, I mean, like, it's kind of like deer where they look so cute and gentle, but like you approach a deer, man, you're, you're kind of risking your life there a little bit. I think Australia's done a really good job of scaring um, people away <laughs> with the with these crazy things. So there's normal, they do have claws. So they have two little hands like this, right? That, that are like that. And their claws are quite sharp. So if they go to do something like that, they, they could claw you. Oh, right? like but, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm sure I, someone's going to correct me now and say they don't have claws, but they, I'm pretty sure they do because I've been grabbed by one. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, but they don't usually do that. They're not, they're not attacking okay. animals, right? But they, like, you go to a wildlife park and they'll just be, like, I'd let, I'd let my, my nephews or whatever run around with them. Okay. They'll, they'll, be, they'll be okay. Because they're, they're not, like, attacking animals. But if you've got food and, I don't know, they, they, they're, they're going to get the food from you or something, yeah. they might get a bit... Feisty, uh, Handsy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, I mean, all animals are kind of like that if they've got of a pouch course. with a joey inside. And what happens with yeah. kangaroos is they give birth to this little joey. It's a little tiny okay. one and it crawls up into the pouch, right, from the birth thing and yeah. gets yeah. in there and then grows in the pouch right. for all this yeah. time. So sometimes they can have a baby in there and you wouldn't necessarily you know. Oh, it's, yeah. not, it's not like a baby that's popping its head out. It's still actually, it's a weird thing. It's like still growing inside, but it's like in the yeah. pouch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah the only marsupials we have are possums, possums in, in America. But still, yeah, it's, I guess I, you don't think about it. Even though you know it, you've learned that. It's just like, you don't really think about it. Yeah, they could, have, like, yeah. Yeah, and so yeah, any pregnant mama is going to be. Yeah, we're yeah. always taught, like, if you run over a kangaroo, because you can when you go on a road trip or something, huh. they can run out because the headlights are there and they, they, sure. they die. Yep. 
And so if yeah. you run over a kangaroo, you should always just hop out of the car and check if it's got yeah. a joey. Oh and they can often be saved then. Like you just, like yeah. I know some people who raised a baby kangaroos like that. And oh. they just, like, they just, there's, they're what, they're wildlife places that will take them because you can't really keep them as a pet because right. they'll sure, just yeah. destroy your house after <laughs> a while. <laughs> but um, some, oh, I, I've had a friend who, like, they're like a baby. You have to feed them with a bottle and all that. Like if you, yeah. if you have one like that and they just, yeah, and then they're fine. They can go back into the wild after. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So but, come to Australia. You'll have all those <laughs> fun yeah. experiences. Done. Done. We'll bring our daughter. We, we would love to. She would love to. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah. She'd be, yes. She'd be totally in the right. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Marie. This was so fun and such a great opportunity. Yeah, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah.